Welcome to the Phageborn online card game tutorial, where we'll be showing the basic mechanics and core gameplay. Phageborn is an extremely tactical game, in which you're trying to destroy the enemy core in order to win the game. You do that by carefully building your deck, selecting your avatar, and forming powerful combos and synergies with them. The game starts with a classic mulligan. Simply select the cards you want to swap with another random card from your deck. There are two major type of cards, energy cards and essence cards. To play your cards, Phageborn uses a dual resource system, making the overall play more dynamic by allowing you to play more cards per turn. Essence, the purple resource which increases automatically each turn, is used to play your units. The yellow resource, Energy, is used to play all types of your energy cards and is increased manually. Unit cards have power, health and cost. Some unit cards can also have combat modifiers, called modes, as well as effects completely described in the text box. If you are playing first, you have the advantage by always initiating with your units up to the curve, always being the one in the lead with essence. However, there are downsides to playing first. Your avatar can't attack the first turn. Also, you don't draw an additional card, and you don't get to level up your attributes, which we'll explain in a moment. Every player has his own avatar. An avatar is a very powerful general of your armies, and it represents you as the player. The avatar has its own power, health, skill, and trait, which the player can see by hovering over an avatar. Skills can be used once per turn, unless there's a special rule saying otherwise. When your avatar's health is reduced to zero, it becomes subdued, which subtracts five health from your core and grants the opponent with an additional card. When the avatar is subdued, you cannot cast any energy cards. The subdued state is indicated by two chains over an avatar's health icon. At the beginning of its turn, one chain is removed, and when both chains are gone, the avatar revitalizes and is ready to return to combat. In Phageborn, positioning your units and avatar are of crucial importance. Since units can normally attack only their targets within the same lane, the players should be very careful on which lane you play them. Also, most abilities can only be casted on the same lane your avatar is in. This type of restriction is called local, and it will always be emphasized in the effect description. When it comes to targeting, local basically means that the target needs to be in the same lane as the origin of the effect. Local can also define the way an effect is resolved. For example, some area of effect cards will only affect local units of the lane it has been casted to. When a unit enters the board, it cannot do any actions, but it is still a blocker. Once the units are already in the game and ready for action, you can decide to move them to the other lane instead of attacking. You can do the same with your avatar, but the difference is that an avatar can still attack regardless of moving. By selecting or simply drag and dropping your unit onto its target, you issue combat between them. If the attacker stays alive, he becomes exhausted, a state within which it doesn't count as blocker. The avatars respect the same combat ruling as units. If you attack with it, it deals damage to the unit and gets retaliated by it. An avatar can't get exhausted but can normally attack only once per turn. Unless a special rule says otherwise, the attacker must be in the same lane as its target to be able to attack it. 
Units can attack the enemy core if there are no enemy units blocking it. Units can't attack the enemy avatar unless a special rule says otherwise. An avatar can also attack enemy avatars if there are no enemy units blocking it. Avatars do not retaliate. Every turn, your resources get replenished. You draw a card, and you get to decide which attribute should you level up. Leadership, Energy, Overcharge. By leveling up leadership, your avatar gets its health increased, and you reach or scale certain ability requirements of your cards. By increasing your energy, you can access more powerful energy cards, or simply a possibility to cast many of them. Overcharge is a life tap mechanic. You sacrifice the life of your core in order to gain an additional card, expanding your possibilities. But be careful, because every point of overcharge increases the damage your core takes. If you don't have enough life on your core to overcharge, this option will simply be disabled. There are currently three types of energy cards. Abilities, Ambushes, and Special Attacks. Abilities are normally instantly resolved after playing. Be careful about positioning your avatar when it comes to playing abilities because some of them can only be targeted or resolved in the same lane as your avatar. Ambushes are hidden cards which can only trigger on your opponent's turn if a certain condition is met. Special attacks are buffs for your avatar's offensive. They are resolved on your next avatar attack and they normally increase the power of your next swing and sometimes provide unique bonuses. If you play another special attack when you already have one equipped, it will replace the one already active on your avatar. By attacking with special attack, your avatar will get retaliated, so be careful. Finishing your duels will award you with player experience. Upon leveling up, you will get an upgrade point as well as an avatar soul fragment. You can then go to the blacksmith and decide which path you want to take. You can spend your upgrade points unlocking faction seals in order to gain the cards needed for your playstyle. Upon reaching 5 soul fragments, they will merge into Avatar Soul. You can then go to the shrine and unlock an avatar of your choice. Before building your deck in the Librarian, you have to choose a faction and an avatar you want to play. Alongside the decision which avatar you'll choose, you'll also have to pick between three of its unique traits to provide you with passive bonuses. Your deck needs to have 40 cards in it in order for it to be playable. Up to three copies of the same card are allowed. As for the legendary cards, you can have only four different legendary cards in your deck. Unlock and choose them wisely, since they are usually the keystone of your decks. After you save your deck, you are ready for battle. Simply click on play, choose your deck, and find your wordy opponent. We are looking forward to seeing your strategic mind inside the battle.